Next one, uh, issues about which the Soviet Union and the United States agreed following the war included the importance of capitalism in preventing future wars, the establishment of spheres of influence, national self-determination for countries formerly under Nazi control, or none of these. I think the wireless response system not only uh, helps with the interest of the student, but also the, uh, lear the learning for the student. Because uh, like, we can take daily quizzes if we want to, like that. I mean, it's, it's real fast and easy. I think it's really made it useful that we have a new means for instant feedback so that especially when our teacher does morning quizzes in our classroom, we can know automatically whether we've comprehended the reading or not. And it helps us to move on and cover the materials that we didn't understand as well more quickly. The responses show that, you, that six of you got it right, um, but seven of you got it wrong and, and answered two different ones. So I want to take a look at those two different responses that you chose and see what you came up with, see why you came up with those. None of you went for the establishment of spheres of influence. That's good, because that was the wrong answer. Uh, four of you, though, went for this national self-determination for countries formerly under Nazi control. Now, Ronnie, you said you chose that. Because the U.S. wanted national self-determination for eastern colonies in Europe, but then they didn't like say the Soviets wanted it, but they did say that they wanted to like keep their borders weak and control government by making them communists. So if they're going to control government by making them communists, if the Soviet Union is going to control their government, is that uh, self-determination? No. So, Ronnie, it sounds like the, the term self-determination is the part of this answer that you didn't know, and so you went for that as the correct answer? In that particular question, there were a number of students who got it wrong. In fact, m more students got it wrong than got it right, as I recall. Um, and one of the things that, that the viewer response system lets you do is that it allows you to, to stop on the questions that need to be addressed. A traditional paper and pencil quiz, you, you, the kids take them, they give them to you, they get them back, you get the right answer or you get the wrong answer. Usually that's the end of the story. What this allowed me to do is there were four students who had missed a particular uh, or chosen a particular incorrect answer and it was pretty quickly um, ascertained that the problem was a vocabulary problem. There was a word that a number of them did not understand. One student spoke up to that fact but as I looked around and talked about it, I saw a couple other students nodding their head and another you know, admitted that was the problem. And not only does that, uh, that particular method and the technology that we're using allow me to find those questions that are causing problems, but also to find the problem and to correct the problem because I, I'm willing to bet that those students who did not know what self-determination meant have a pretty good idea now of what it is. <laughs>